Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. You're not responsible for the family you are born to. You're not responsible for the people you're related to. You might not be responsible for the schools you went to the job that you did, the place that you lived, the circumstances around you, you might not be responsible. But you are definitely responsible for your kids and everything that happens to you after you believe and understand. Are you hearing me? When a Christian is fully mature, and that's the place of maturity, the young ones seek to take responsibility of everything that is happening in their lives and stop blending situations, events, circumstances, economies, institutions, and any line. You are entirely responsible of what happens in your life when you're mature. If somebody is still a baby, they will point to issues around them. But if somebody matures, you will realize that in this world, no man can stop you. No man can slow you. Nothing can stand in your way for your success. Only yourself. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, My people die because they lack knowledge. He didn't die, say they die because they are bewitched. He didn't say they die because of their grandfather's witchcraft. He didn't say that they die because of their cousin's witchcraft or what their cousin and auntie made them dream. But they die because they lack knowledge. If you have not been listening to the Secrets of Divine Providence, Part 1 and Part 2, I don't recommend if you're submitted to this ministry. If you're a visitor, I recommend. But if you're submitted to this ministry, I command you to look for those two CDs and listen to them. There are two things that sometimes I became a bit more, cons three things, in fact, that I become very tough on. Your finances, your ministry life, the education. In fact, with, the edu with education, I become legal. That is why if you submit it to me, and you don't bring me your results, and you fail, it's your problem. There are people who used to bring me results when they had fallen, we prayed, and they got up. But if you submit it to me and you don't give me your results, there I become legal. I don't understand grace. There. That's the part I'm praying to God for the grace to understand. Why I become mad when you don't give me your results and you fail. So it's the same thing here. Finances. Okay? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, because the issue is a place of knowledge, it's what you know. This man just said, one someone has opened up the door in his life. You know, for me, as the, 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 when he was telling me his testimony, I was not interested in the 100 million. I was interested in the progress of the door that is open upon his life. That was my interest. And I asked him, so what's the future of that 100 million? Then he told me, he said, that is just the beginning. Any time, he can increase anyway. I understood that thing. So, he's not just holding 100 million shillings as a bill, there is a slate open for him to be increased as and when the market applies. And that's wonderful. That's open. He can't go back. You understand? He just can't. You see, there are things in your life that can happen, and you lock a certain door, and that door can never open again in your life. There are certain things you have left and even if the devil wants you, might, you will never go back again. And that's the principle of progress. You must come out of something to stay out of it, not to go back one day. Because there are certain people, if they go back where they came from, they will die, I am sure. 
I am sure. The same people, if they go back to where they came from, they will what? Die. So now, let's speak finances. First part of divine providence, I explained a lot. Second part of divine providence, I explained a lot. Third part, I think I should do a fourth one because when I was doing my study and communion, I realized there's quite a lot that I couldn't have in this one hour or so that I have here. So I think I'll do a fourth part. And the fourth part will just be around the churches of Thessalonica, Corinth, Philippe, and Macedonia. I show you now the excellence of it, okay? And trust me, finances must work in your life. You understand? That's why I tell people, there is nothing dissipating to the spirit, like talking something you're not walking in. I'm telling you this because I'm not poor. I have the audacity to preach because I'm not poor. I don't lack. And I have more than some of you think. Not by faith. Ah! <laughs> so I am telling you this because I'm not poor. It must first work for you. Then you can preach it. You understand? If it has failed in your life, don't preach it until it works. Then when it works, do what? Preach it. Hallelujah! Let's begin. Today I, I intended to first open your eyes to a more spiritual thing than just the proclamations we make forth, we give forth. Today I just want to open your eyes to, to the basic, what I want to call the basic rules that govern finances across the world. So that by the time I come into the Bible, appreciate why I'm coming into the Bible. By the time I get into the scripture, you will appreciate why I'm getting into the scripture. Praise the Lord. I just don't want to tell you what the word says. I want to open your eyes, many of you, to truths and issues and circumstances and situations that are happening across the world. And these things are true. Now you see those things, then come back and tell me whether the things I'm telling you work or not. Let's begin with a few facts. Are you okay? The basic rules of global economy. Praise the Lord. The basic rules of the global economy. I want to open your eyes to the economy according to the, to the world. And the understanding of the basic rules that are played in the economy. I want to show you a picture of the economy of the world. I want to show you a picture of wealth distribution across the world. I want to paint a small picture of, or probably a miniature picture of the true experience of what is happening financially, globally. Then you as an individual, you tell me after this whether money is spiritual or anyone can have it. Praise the Lord. And the answer just to guide you by disclaimer, money is spiritual. And not everyone has money. And not everyone can have money. You understand? Not everyone can have money. But everyone should or must have money. You get the difference? The basic rules of global economy. One, I wrote a note and said that we have about $223 trillion dollars that are distributed across the whole world. So I want to use that as the total line of budgets to account for where $23 trillion is across the earth. Praise the Lord. Now, if we are talking of $23 trillion scattered across the world, or rather the thought in you as an individual is, think of the resources that you have, the amount of money that you have on, in, in your bank accounts, plus the money that you've kept at home and those few monies you've kept with your relatives, add the money you've lent people, Quantify your possessions from the plot of land that you have, the land title that you have, the house that you have, the cows and chickens that you carry, that car farm, whether you have one or not. So some of you, <laughs> pathetically students, calculate how much pocket money you have in your bag. You understand? Add it together and compare it against $223 trillion. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. Now, so, that's why I wrote the most important note before I start to preach that. We have about $223 billion trillion across the world. Now, let's account for the $223 trillion. Note number one. 
one of the most shocking issues that you're going to find, and all these things that I wrote here, I took time to do research. Assertive research, objective, subjective. I did enough research from different authorities to come to this conclusion. And if you go on the internet over Google, read quite enough, enough, enough books, you'll understand this. So I took time to read a number of resources to see that there was a consistent result researcher. You understand? And it's what I zero do. You understand? So I'm just saving you hours of trying to read into just the simple conclusion of these things that I've picked, not from one reader, not from two readers, not from three read four readers. I mean writers or researchers or consultants, so to speak. One, amazingly, one percent of the world's richest people have forty three percent of the world's wealth, and that is about ninety six trillion dollars. So of the 223 minus 96 trillion dollars, 96 trillion dollars is owned by 1% of the world. They own 43% of the world's wealth. Are you thinking with me? 1% of the world owns 43% of the world's resources, and that is at 96 trillion from the 223 if you're a mathematician, and then you do 223 minus 96, you know how much we have now. Are you hearing me? And probably one of the things I did that not there, but I will tell you, is when I did the research of the 2%, I just added on 1%, that is following the order of the richest guys, and I realized that 2% already owns more than 50% of the world's wealth. That means more than 50% of the world's wealth is owned by 2% of the world. The rest of the 98% population in the world are fighting for a 50%. But when we increase this gradient from 2% going 3, 4, 5%, this is where the most shocking things happen. Next slide. Number two, point number two. 80% of the world's population. So. If you've been counted 1%, 2%, eh? let's leave the first 20% and come to the 80% of the world's, research, the world's population. And the truth of this is that 80% of the world's population have 6% of the world's wealth. And I bet you, every man physically in this room is under that 80%. 80% of the world's population. How many people are in the world? We have roughly 7 billion people. So that that's hypothetical or no, probably theoretical sense that assume is that we are about 7 billion people in the world. You understand? 80% of 7 billion people own 6% of the world's wealth. Already 1% owns 43 percent. You understand? That means from the one percent to the eighty percent, that's where the other gap also fits. So I can say twenty percent of the world's population owns about ninety-four percent, right, of the world's resources. But Again, the reason that's why I gave you the one percent was that you'll understand that forty-three percent of all that is in a one population. So there's already a bigger gap between the first one two percent to the three percent ranging to the eighty percent, and a very big gap from the twenty percent and the eighty percent. Am I am I clear? Next, the richest. 300 people in the world have the same wealth as the poorest 3 billion people in the world. So, I can tell you that the first three richest, 300 richest people in the world own the same money as 3 billion people. How many 3 billion people? That is like Brazil, China, United States of America, and probably a bigger country called Mines. And that's the total number. That is probably India, China, Brazil, United States of America, those big, big, big nations. You understand? The total sum of those 
It's about 3 billion people. So what 300 people have is equivalent to what 3 billion people have on the earth. Do you understand what I mean? What I mean to say is, let me give you the, for some of you already in the 80%, who own 6% of the world's wealth. You understand? There are people here who earn 4 or 5 million a month, or 6 million, so to speak. Okay? No, no. Let me speak of the simple graduate who earns a million shillings. Compare that graduate who earns a million shillings every month with the house girl who earns 50,000 shillings. If it is calculated by 12, how much is that? 600,000. That means what the house girl earns in one year is still less than what somebody earns in one month. Here. That's a million shillings. It could go deeper to two, it could go deeper to three, it could go deeper to four. And consequently, if you're talking of four million per month, how much that how many years does a house girl need to earn what that four million person earns in one month? That is four million divided by six hundred, one hundred and twenty, twenty-four, twelve plus twelve. You get what I'm coming from? How many years does a house girl need to earn four million shillings? Close to how many years? Seven years. So what somebody will earn in seven years, somebody will earn in one month. The next seven years are 14 years, two months. The next seven years are 21, that is three months. The next seven years are 28, that is four months. The next seven years, 31, five. The next seven years, 42. So you might find that what somebody earns in one year is equivalent to what somebody will earn over their lifetime. They have teeth, they have eyes, they have a nose, they have a body, they breathe, they have brains. But that's how wealth is distributed. That's why I'm trying to tell you money is spiritual. Next. This shocked me and annoyed me, but I understood. 200 years ago, rich countries were only three times richer than poor countries. Only 200 years ago. Only 200 years ago. So, what, there is something that happened in the space of 200 years ago that I want to open your eyes to. Because if I open your eyes to this, you'll understand where the next 200 years or 200 are going. There is something, there is a principle that was invented in the earth 200 years ago. Because I just woke up and just started to go review these things from different people to see what opinion they have. And I realized that many of these men don't have the answer. And I understood why they don't have the answer. They don't have the word. Otherwise, he could not, he should not have trusted me enough to lend to a nation. I'm just showing you how we're going to do it. America is too indebted that the other day I was reading and realized that since 2008, American, simple Americans have contributed at least $19.1 billion to the Treasury of the United States to tell them, please pay off your debt. These are individuals lending a nation to pay off. Because that's how indebted the United States of America is. That economy has fallen. Britain is living on debt. Entirely debt. Japan and China have lent. The Arabians have lent. And that's why it will be so easier for the Muslim Brotherhood to infiltrate the United States of America. Because it also puts a lot of money there. And America needs that money. Otherwise, whoever knew America would get Saudi Arabia and Turkey and quite Syria. Nobody ever builds of that. But there is something about money. The Bible says that money answers all things. That's how serious it is. Praise the Lord Jesus. 200 years ago, there is something that happened. 
from two, space of 200 years ago to now, that I want to open your eyes to. 200 years ago, rich countries were only three times richer than the poor countries. After colonialism, in the 1960s, the gap increased to 35 times richer than the average poor country. So, before colonialism, America was three times richer than Ugandans. After colonialism in the 1960s only, 1960s only, that was about 160 years, okay? They were already 35 times richer than these nations. 2014, the richest countries are 80 times richer than poor countries. 2014. What increased the gap from the to 2014 and increased the margin from 35 times richer to 80 times richer and so for the past 200 years increased the margin of 3 times richer to 80 times richer in a space of 200 years. Something spiritual happened. Something spiritual happened. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, the saddest news is that spiritual thing is still happening. And I'll prove that. Next. The richer countries invented a certain principle of trying to... Huh? Of course, there was a sharpness in the men who built this principle, but they also knew there was also a vast ignorance and naivety of the men who were on the receiving end of this. So what did they say? They said we are going to start sending aid to compensate for the poor countries. So I went to the statistics and realized that America, European countries, the richest countries in the world, put together, send about $130 billion a year to poor countries at aid. You understand? So the total number of aid that comes from those European countries to African countries every year is about 130 billion dollars. Okay? But remember, they are bringing back from the people they exploited. And they are giving them aid. And that aid given comes with condition. Accept this, accept that, Accept that, accept that. 130 billion is coming back every year to the aid of men from whom they became 80 times richer than in a space of 200 years because they colonized them. Next. You still, okay, you'll become a bit tired. Give me a second. Now, I realize now I'm accounting, I'm accounting now for the money that leaves the poor countries to the rich countries, okay? I've just showed you what leads the rich countries now as we are speaking to the poor is 130 billion. Now let's account for the money that leaves Africa to go out. And large corporations alone are taking 900 billion dollars for debt, not for debt. They are earning 900 billion dollars from Africa taking it to the richer countries. Which, thank you, which are these large corporations? Barclays Bank, AIG, which of those? Mention. Share? Who? Share. Thank you very much. Mention. AIG, thank you. Mention. All. Eh? Standard Chartered Bank. Standing. Thank you. All of those institutions are getting money out. Who is the leading uh, building material distributor in Uganda? Are they Ugandan? No, they come from somewhere else. That money leaves our country and goes. To a place where a man makes coffee, you ship it, put it on a ship, take it out, a man reproduces it, sells it seven times more expensive than the kilo. And the middleman who is buying coffee from the market in Uganda, selling it abroad, is selling it 
almost eight times the price he bought it from the farmer. Now, if you're an agriculturalist or an economist, you understand the concept of the scales of value addition or value chains. Why is the least farmer who grows this coffee earn the least amount of money and the last guy who just received it on slate earns more money than the guy who planted it? How long did it take for this man to plant it? How much did he put into planting there, borrowing money from circles and cooperatives in their home villages and different people and then they are, they, they are saving up this money to grow these crops and then these crops bring in a little money and that little money can only sustain their small households subsistently for a small amount of food and education for their children and a little health, 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 health initiative it, in, in, in instances where the kids should fall sick and they don't have money to expensive hospital like I expect that will charge them only 50,000 shillings for just seeing a doctor without being given treatment. So what do they do? They go to cheaper options of or clinics, different places there. That's why their women produce and die there. That is why some of their children die because they've been ingested with expired drugs. And the man who gets the last product of coffee treats his child in the most expensive hospital, yet he didn't plant the coffee. You understand where I'm coming from? So large corporations alone across the world you, that's why when you see franchises come, Reebok, Adidas, Javas, all of these things are not coming to put money here. They are coming to take it. I'm told a few years ago Uganda was like the second exporter of coffee in the world. And now we're nowhere. They used to wake up in the morning and go around saying to get guys and put them in buses to go and pick up every evening. Why? Because the country was working a wealth from within. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Next. Poor countries are paying, and this amazed me, 600 billion dollars to the rich countries every year for debt. That was what I said. The debt incentive. Why? Because on top of the aid that is given them of 130 billion a year, they need more than the aid given, the help given. So they need to borrow. And by the principle of borrowing, they pay back 600 billion dollars a year to the rich countries. So 900 billion large corporations, 600 billion going back paying debt. Are you hearing me? Next. Poor countries lose $500 billion to the rich on just trade rules imposed by the rich countries to get access to cheaper resources and labor. $500 billion is lost in just trade what? Trade what? Rules. Simple trade rules but are very risky to the economy of the black man. Simple trade rules. This is why people put those conditions. For example, there is a concept called trade mispricing. How many of you have heard of it? Economists. Trade mispricing is where a man, a country, a richer country, for example, can raise the price of what they export and put principles to lower a price of what they import. So everything that enters their country enters cheaply but goes out expensive. And on top of that, they bring those rules to the poor country and tell it, if you want us to invest in your nation, we need you to give us tax holidays. And they are already not paying taxes, but what they are bringing in the country is already expensive, more expensive from, as compared to how it left the country. And sometimes there is a hard cost for the man who also has to import, because some of them pay transportation and a few other taxes and things hidden in there. So at the end of the day, it becomes expensive for you to export something Yes, it is cheaper for them to receive it and then they in turn send it back to you expensively for it to enter your country to buy it more expensively than the weight left. I gave you a simple example of coffee. What 
what does it take for our country to buy machines, the best machines in the world, you understand, and get cotton and make standard clothes? How many people in this room are putting on clothes that didn't come from this country? From even the boxers you're putting on and knickers, they come from China. It's that serious. Because your people can't make it. We don't have a way to make it. And they put rules. For example, a, a Ugandan can want to start a country, a company here, and the government won't help. And there is now this thing called entrepreneurs, investors from abroad. The other day I was in Zai Plaza, just opposite where Lauren Barasa was. And I entered in there and I found Indians selling pirated movies. Is that investing? Is that an investor? Kala Kala, you go there and see what they, 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 they're doing, the Ethiopians are doing. Even the smallest restaurants in the world, in Uganda, are owned by Indians. Restaurants, really, really. How much the land I need to pay to go to cookery class and learn to cook chicken biryani? Such that the Indian doesn't need to leave India to come and make chicken biryani home. Because already many of you, your minds are still colonized. If he was thinking like many of you think, he would still be looking for a job. He would still be looking for a job. And that was the rule. The underlying principle of the rule that was set 200 years ago was how to control the minds of men. Because whoever controls your mind controls your resources. Ugandan Africans are still not free in their minds. They're still not free in their minds. The other day I was talking with my sister and the kid gave an answer. You understand? The teacher asked a question. Why do people, why do farmers put on gum boots? You understand? And my sister's kids say to prevent them from stepping in feces, which feces will affect them. The teacher marked it wrong. Why? Because the teacher gave a certain answer and that's the exact answer the child must give, not feces. That means you're denying this child the, the right to, to think outside the box. Why? Because when we were teaching you, we didn't say to prevent you, prevent you from? She says we only say to prevent you from harm. Just that. So because the child didn't say to prevent you from harm, you mark it wrong. But when you think it back here, this child was right. She says can harm and infect, and infect an individual. The three years. So, because of that, there is a preconceived line subconsciously that is put in our system to just seek to present what the mind gave us and not to allow us to think outside the box. That is why many of you over the years, this has created a certain principle where all you just do is photocopy. Cram as much as you can to present it as much as you can on the paper and you are proved to be smart. Smartness is not how much a man comes. Smartness is how much a man thinks outside the box and thinks even what another man didn't think. So we are subject to as far as the man thought. They get in the little boy's dream who is dreaming to be an engineer, a doctor, and then tell him Napoleon Bonaparte, Louis the Sixteenth, the Peninsula Wars. <laughs> There were the cultures that killed me. Examine. You understand? The boy is examining things that are in Europe. He, you, you know, the, the, this thing is holding them because as they examine things that are in Europe, they, they, they are forgetting that their father had a plot of land in Masaka where they can plant mushrooms and earn two million shillings a month. And they are beaten because they failed to cram loose the 16. They repeat a whole year because they fail to understand Voltaire. Many of you now have graduated, you're asking yourself, what was the use of Voltaire? What was the use of Montesquieu? What was the use of Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette? What was the use? 
What has it done in your life? The French Revolution. The Industrial Revolution. What has it done in your life? It only prevented the problem Europe had of industry. It didn't point to the issues that your people are facing. And that is what we are putting as curriculum for our children to pass. No wonder you have graduates who can't think outside the box. Many of you who are still looking for jobs, what don't you have? Hands, fingers. You, you look at the average church member who says I don't have a job. Anything can go in Uganda. Some of you have parents with records of land. Put something on that plot of land. Tell your father, I want to go out for a month. Get a guy, pay him 200 grand, let him dig. You can even rent land in Uganda, 400,000 shillings a season. Plant onions. The other man was telling me about onions. I've forgotten that their name. On an acre of land, they can earn a person 8 million shillings. On an acre of land. Who is professional and that amount of money. That when they were called about Baba, I remember this, this guy of Fakum Uganda was, was explaining the concept. Onions. That day church member also sent me an email. Same thing about onions. Cabbage, sorry. I'm surprised how a simple cabbage can earn a man 12 million shillings on an acre of land. How many professionals are earning that money? They are colonized. They are very colonized. They don't want to get the fingers dirty, the two anointed, the two smart, the pay. I don't know, but it's a big problem. What does the United States have? Does it have gold? Does it have silver? Does it have oil? Nigeria has oil. Their kids are still sleeping hungry, right? Even. Uganda, what don't we have? 25 years ago, Singapore left third world and became first world. Singapore is not richer than us in any mineral resource. But 25 years, they left first world and entered, I mean third world and entered first world for 25 years. For you, how many years have you spent? Uganda is still third world. You're still putting on second hand clothes and cheap perfumes. Do you know how many graduates here are looking for jobs that they can't get them? That guy praying for a guy he has spent seven years after graduation. He's not doing anything. Gideon did his lab thing. He's a lab technician. Burundi. He can check you and tell you whether you have antibiotics or sorry, bacteria. <laughs> why why we encourage even this guy to go out in the first place to Sudan? I mean, she, she, she said, you know, she was in a microscope looking at bacteria and she said, the Lord has not called me for this life. <laughs> he told me, Papa, the Lord has not called me for this life. I just feel there's something that should happen in my life. I told him, go ahead. He wasn't even meant to go to South Africa, but he told him, don't. No. Eight months. Sending his money. Keep my money, I'm coming. Keep my money, I'm coming. Keep my money, I'm coming. While he's there doing that, these ones are coming. The such method, project planning and management. Theory and practice of social work. One and two psychology. Sigmund Freud. Albert Einstein. Stages. Oro. Phallic. Latin. I'm not saying education is bad. Money say. My education is bad. Now, he is doing a lot, and right now there's a university student who has graduated. They are sending CVs. We are not going to grow rich by men sending CVs to companies of Indians who have the top management in India because they don't even trust us to put us up there. They come for cheap labor here. They put factories here because they know it's more expensive to have a factory up there in a country that has conditions of minimum wage and, and all it like. 
So they bring it to an average guy who spends the whole day working in an Indian biscuit factory and he has on shillings that day. And that person is already renting a house of 30 or 50,000. How does this 20 sustain them at the end of the month when they even have kids? But in this world, there are people earning 70,000 shillings per month in factories of investors. Next line. So, when you do the math of how much lives Africa and poor countries, not than just Africa, but other poor countries, okay? Pantanal areas, Philippines, to the rich countries, I realized that it was a total of more than two trillion dollars. Two billion. Sorry. Let, where is it? Two trillion, sorry. So if two trillion is leaving Africa and other poor nations to go to the rich, and the rich are sending one such a billion dollars for aid, and the rest they are lending, who is developing who? Who is developing who? Answer me. Who is developing who? How can we fix it? How can we fix it? Who is developing who? Is it the rich country? Is America developing you? Or you're developing America? Okay, spiritual concept here. Who is richer? No, no, think about it. Who is richer? You are richer. Because you're making them richer, you make them 80 times richer. 200 years ago. And you're still making them richer. So how can we fix it? That you carry the wealth that makes them rich. Simple answer. Give it to me, Daniel. Change the rules. Simple. Change the rules. Now, to this small guy who has a small cut job offer of being a, a, a bank clerk posting cash on a bank till, this mind must enter. I am not working as a teller to make enough money to buy a house and I can't get married and build a few things and well, promote it through the system. Heart of Christ members are working to change the rules. Put it in your head. We are no longer working to buy a plot of land and a house in Kawempe. We want to change the rules. Our working issue now, from today henceforth, if you're a church member, in Heart of Christ Ministries, the principle that should be in your head when you're sitting on that day tomorrow morning should be, I am changing the rules. Because the rules are not fair. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world cannot think of another way to change the rules because already the men who set the rules are rich enough to sustain the rules. You need a spiritual system to change the rule. Why? Now, let me make more sense to the thing you read every day but haven't been making sense. Let your neighbor smile. It's possible to change the rules. Tell your neighbor it's possible to change the rules. Proverbs 13, verse 22. The Lord gave us a, a startup. He says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Meaning that $96 billion, trillion dollars, is yours. Even if you don't clap. 
what you need is to get the principle to transfer it to your account. Very simple. That 26, 96 billion is yours, even though you are in the 6%. No, even though you're in the 80% that own 6% of the world's resources. If you're a Christian, you're not in the 80%. You start to think, I am in that one percent. So what they have is mine. Simple principle. The money that is going to build this company, it was not his. But he had to know and do a certain principle for that money to shift a certain man's hand and trust it with him. And if you do not set that principle by the spirit, the man will reach you. He had not gone to ask for materials. He had started a mutual conversation with a man whom he sees is a mogul in that area. He did not expect to receive a deal of a hundred million shares. But the rest is not to the street, neither the battle to the strong, neither bread to the men of skill, but there is that chance that happens to every man. Many people don't know how to seize it. That's why, if you look in your life, some of you, there was a time you were at a brick of a million dollar deal and it died. That was the point of transfer. Some of you, if you go back in your life, there are opportunities you had. And had they happened, you could not have been where you were. If you don't have this knowledge, you will love money and it will become your God. Imagine a woman who sells her body or he gives in her body to a man because the man has money or she expects a baby. Some of them are, are just even professional, but some of them are passively, but they are the same principle because she just doesn't do it on the street, but she does the same thing. You understand? Why would somebody sell their body? The temple. Simple. They don't know any other way to transfer the money. Why does a simple worker cheat? Why do you see corruption in our nation? They don't know another way to transfer the money. So these whole things of fraud and forgery, illegitimate cash coming into the bank, and the smart guy trying to make it legitimate by spreading it across different businesses, layering, displacing, all those money laundry lines are just calculated lines of men who don't know how to transfer. Absurdly, many are even sinners. So what they are amassing will leave them. How many people in this country are doing witchcraft in ministries? Chikubo, Arua Park, all the business places, Chiseni. I worked in Chikubo for some time. You would enter every shop and find something up, something down, something in the middle. These workers who have built those from behind tropical complex all down there, I know the owners of those buildings. And I know what they used to do. Some of them. Because I'm a banker. I know how some money comes. And there is money you can't explain, yet it's not stolen. And I've seen the people of the world do it through their other line of the spirit that is not of God, but it transferred it. Somehow it transferred. Now, if the devil, the sons of the world, have become more wiser than the sons of light in this generation, in their generation, that they can go to a devil and do certain things and they work, there should be another Christian version of how this thing should work. Now, some of you don't understand witchcraft. Let me explain. Witchcraft doesn't work to a Christian. But there are men who have done witchcraft. Let me tell you. Many years ago, it should have been in the 80s. My father tells a story. He was standing in the, in the, in the, in the taxi park. Okay? 
And a man did magic, and money came out of my father's pocket and started to fly in open air, going in another man's pocket. And my father saw that money in the middle and held it. This happened in broad daylight all the time. But there is a price that they pay that is bigger than desire. That is why even rich doctors can't make themselves rich. There is a principle that transfers that money. It just has to transfer the money. Bear with me if you're late, you can go. But we must understand this, and I can't stop in the middle. You understand? There should be a principle that transfers to and from. So, these things that are laid in the scriptures are for your sake that you might learn how to transfer. Here. Now, I have had many prophets prophesying, oh, well, transfer, but it's not transferring. Oh, and the Lord is showing a transfer, a paradigm shift from one place to another place. The Lord is shaking. You see, I even love the way the other prophets say, let's look around there. He says, I shall shake. You understand? It was like there was a portion of where men had money in one line, and then God started to shake it go in another direction. But you should know the principles that shake for the money to go in that direction you want it. And when the Lord said to tell me these things, I understood why we are going to be so terribly rich. Not very rich, terribly. Terribly. So he says there is a principle where the man will live well for his son. Proverbs 13. He says that principle is existing where the boy will be rich because of the father's wealth. And I'll tell you the truth, the 1%, if you go back to the 1%, you realize that almost 60% of those 1% never made it. It was transferred. But he says, if you're like many Ugandans where there is nothing to transfer, there is still a principle set where what the 1% has is already yours. You just need to know how to transfer it from one account to another account. And that's why the spiritual line of money is very simple. The $223 trillion scattered across the world, you realize that all that money is for Christians. But that's not all. It is in somebody's account. It is in somebody's pocket. It is in somebody's house. It is in somebody's name. But it's somewhere. It's not going to come from heaven. It is somewhere distributed. Do you understand where I'm coming from? It is somewhere what? Distributed. Now, education is wonderful. Why? Because there are certain things you can't access without education. You must understand that. Even the proper book says education is profitable. There are certain things you will need because you speak English. There are certain things you can access because you remember a certain economy. That's why a man who didn't study can't go and say, I am the MD of this company. Either he does the principle to get there, but he can't claim it because he's Christian. I claim it. And then he gets what's up in the morning and says, bring that paper. Come and sign. What are you going to sign if you never went to school? But I'm saying there is a deeper principle that has to come. Because that's why the richest men in the world, majority of them are not the most educated. Mulwan, Adie, Chia. They're already professors. <laughs> they are reading in the news with Dr. Sudir. <laughs> I said, what money can do? I can buy any paper. And many of those men did. Many of you are going to die when you're not professors. Yet you really did the work. God and Wavamuno, most of the time when some of you are cramming these things was selling Matoki in Masaka. But he's a professor at that right. 
He is a professor. But if we go down to the life of this man, can we trace the degree, master's degree, PhD and professor? We can. But he's there. So that means this thing has also provided for a certain way to get education without necessarily being in class. It can it can qualify a man. A certain Sudanese came to the bank with an admission form from Makerere University and he started school. A Sudanese friend of mine, he could not even write a name, but he was worth $500,000. He couldn't even write amount in words, but he came with an admission letter from Makerere University. I was surprised. Now, as of whether it was fake or not, me I know what it was. For the sake of security, let me keep quiet. He can't write amount in words, but he had an admission letter from Macquarie University. And he used to get his own. Because this system has set rules of getting things another way. I'll give an example. Richard, uh, Richard has already is in his church. The professor told her, she fell the paper, and the lecturer told her, unless you sleep with me, you will not get the max. She came, we prayed, God did a miracle, and God made somebody mad to just get the girl's max. No, they were actually, no, they were disappeared. She didn't fail. They had disappeared. And the lecturer said, I can make them appear if you give me your we made a prayer in just a few hours. Somebody up there ran mad and they were put on remote to just look for her paper. And then they got it and put them up. But if she had opened her legs, she would have gotten the paper. Now, the even one who failed might open her legs and pass. It's worth when even the consequences of this profession are working on individuals. Imagine that surgeon who didn't really do it by marriage and they are going to operate you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a small injection. It will, it will put you in sleep. <laughs> oh, you guys, <laughs> let God treat you. <laughs> I said, let God treat you. There are principles that transfer everything. You just need to know the transfer. Let me share something simple. It's a problem when I say things that I complicate it. Okay, let me share something interesting. There are two principles that I want to share with you and they are the most important. Okay? Then there are other principles I'll share in part four. Pastor Isaiah should give me the data of when to share it. But there are other principles, things like the seed of faith, where you just run radical and you want something and then you pay for it by a particular amount of money. And the underlying prompting of how much it should cost your spirit. For example, I've seen people, if you who has understood this principle, in a sense where he can contribute a large amount on a person's need because what the person who contributed needs is too big for his wallet or finances to build. So they saw a particular seed to set a principle for it to buy the bigger PP. I'll explain that in the first part. Okay? But let me just explain two principles that are important, the tithe and the offering. Now I'm going to dispel many things many of you have been saying and thinking about these two things. The tithe, no, the tithe and the first fruit. Okay? The tithe and the first fruit. Then there are some other two or three other principles I'll share in the first part, and we shall call that a, a day. So anyone who comes and says, hey, Papa, I'm broke, first listen to all those CDs, explain them to me. Leave for three months, and after you're broke, come back. You will never come back, I'm sure. Okay? Tight and there. Now, number one, I want to commit to you. 
that Christ is not a mosaic idea. Praise the Lord. Christ was not even Abraham's idea. Can I say it again? Christ was not Moses' idea, and neither was Christ Abraham's idea. I've been around people who are legal, and they say Christ is legal. People have different understandings of Christ. One time I was reading there was somewhere somebody was saying, well, you shall bring the Christ to the house of God. The Bible now says I am the temple of God. Therefore the Christ comes, the God was no longer. Therefore you can spend it. Pastor Moses, not here. The, 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 the Christian explained the principle. <laughs> so if I'm the house of the Lord, therefore, the tithe can come to me and I use it. And I'm like, then someone also said, yes, thank you for reminding me. We have been made priests. They said you shall take the tithe to the priest. Now you have been made priests and kings to the Mosaic God. So you can bring tithe to yourself. That's not the principle that transfers money. It's not. I've heard people say, uh, like one time somebody came and said, <laughs> I don't tithe here, I tithe somewhere else to my spiritual father, but I pray from heart of Christ. I said, You have a problem. One, go to your spiritual father. But if you're feeding from here, how, I don't understand, in the first place, why is his daughter or son raised in another household? Get it physical. Why would Emma's kid be raised in my house? Yes, he's Emma's kid. And Emma has a house. Do you understand? Do you understand? Your type is to your priest or the housewife friendship. Am I clear? And very simple because the type is a faith experience for the new creature as of led whether to the particular e priest or the household where you eat, it's okay. You shouldn't be judged as of whether you gave it to a man or you gave it into the church. You shouldn't be judged. Why? Because this is a spiritual unction. It is not anywhere in the scriptures that it is a must to put it here or there. But the first fruit is clear. That one I'll be, I'll be very clear on it. I'll come later. Now, let me show something about the type. Galatians. I know, Genesis. Chapter 28. Uh, uh, chapter... Mm. I just want to show you that it's not the mind of. Of man. But it's the mind of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis. Verse, chapter 14, verse 18. Let me first show you that what Abraham did. Then I'll tell you exactly how God thinks about the tithe. Genesis 14, verse 18, verse, verse 18 to 20. Very simple one. And Melchizedek, of king, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Next slide. And he blessed him. He blessed who? Abraham. And said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed the Most High God with, with which, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him a tithe of all. So who gave a tithe? Abraham. In Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. Now when Melchizedek receives the tithe, do you realize that this is, let me tell you, and this is a principle about every, any kind of giving. It's not supposed to be collected. It's supposed to be given. There's a difference. I don't expect any man of God to come to church member and tell him, where is your tithe? Where is your first fruit? I've seen men of God do that. Don't ever do it. Because it is received. You see, let me show you an underlying principle. 
Okay? And let me go just a bit deeper into just to meet it. Hebrews 7, verse 6 to 7. Let me show you something interesting about a certain principle. Hebrews 7, verse 6 to 7. He says, But he whose defense is not counted from them received tithe of Abraham, who, the Levite, and blessed him that had the promises, and without all contradiction, the lesser the, the, what? the less is blessed of the better. There is a principle in the spirit that has been said that the less is always blessed by the better. And because our lines of possession are spiritual, I'll come later a bit to the time, but this just slipped in and I thought I should open it into your eyes. Because our lines of possession are spiritual, you're not great because of what you amass, you're great because you believe you are. Any time you have that spirit of greatness, why I always say that church members don't have the spirit, many. Every time you have that spirit of greatness in you, never allow a man to pay a bill. Ask my father, he has never paid a meal that I sat with him, ever. I don't allow it. There's even one where we thought, then he pays by force, but he, I don't allow it. Why? Because I want to put a principle in my head that I'm greater. Why am I saying I must be greater? He prayed it on my life. He told his God, let a point anoint this boy three times and you have anointed me. He knows it. He asked his God. He answered it. Yes, it's about. Do you understand? He said, anoint my son three times more than you have. Anointed him. And so, from that day I learned, my kids must be better than me. It was my do you understand? And because I carry the principle of the greater, don't even go to Pastor Isaiah. Ask any church member who I have sat for lunch with and tea. I have never allowed you to pay my bill. Why? Because I have the mindset that I'm greater. But then you find a Christian seated with a man of God, praying that the man of God pays the bill. You're broke. You're Happen is this mindset, I've seen it's too silly in women. You're the man, you pay. Shut up, darling, go on the desk and pay the bill. And walk up so he can know you don't need his money. Trust me, he'll ask you why you pray for him. He will ask you why you pray for him. Because for us, the girls, we know. For us, the ones we know, when the bill comes, they get their phones. When you pay, they put it back in the bag. I know all your secrets. No, I'm not going to stop, Papa. I'm in good books here. I don't care. But that's the truth. Learn to be independent of any man. There are instances. I really didn't have enough money in my wallet. You understand? But I don't allow to pay my bill. They don't first fight. Why? Because I put it in my head and what? And the lesser is always blessed by the great. Never sit on a meal with a man or do anything with a man and put yourself in the disadvantaged lesser. Never. Fiona, now I used to ride me in her Nissan car. She will tell you. Every time we get to the petrol station, I get my money, I say put it in. Why? Because you're not blessing the lesser. Ask anyone here who has ever eaten with me. I don't, we fight over bills. We fight. Because the greater always blesses the lesser. When I understood this principle in campus, I would get to my family members and just give them money. I go to my elder sister, very rich woman, I give her money. 
I give her the 1,000 I had in my pocket. Oh, Grace has a hard goal. <laughs> Disclaimer. I'm grateful. And I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. The Lord being my witness. I bless all my family. More than any of them blesses. Until I start to see family relatives coming to borrow money from me. Lend me this. Lend me that. Lend me this. Lend me this. And what do I do? I lend them. Some of them I know they not bring back, but I lend them. Why? Because I'm greater. The Lord asked me, imagine you are in the lesser state. Every time you want to hold back your hand, always ask yourself, why are they asking me? Every time you want to hold, why haven't you been the one asking them? You will release what you can. I don't care how little it is. If someone wants to borrow, then give him 1,000 and 2,000 for transport, or the two, if you're not going anywhere, and tell him is all I have, but you can take a beauty for that. <laughs> but never allow to be a lesser. Never. Otherwise, you'll never grow deeper than your father. You will never. You will never. You will never get a deeper revelation than your spiritual thirst, your priest. You will never increase and multiply than your priest. Never. Because you float at the principles of transfer. This anointing creates a certain access to money. There are things I have because I'm anointed, not because I work in the bank. No. A radical guy comes just because of the anointing upon my life. Boom, put something in my hand because I'm anointed. Not a money degree diploma. No. Simple anointing. Namu Teddy Pastor of Namugala did not go to school, but she has built a church, the biggest church in East Africa. Six billion shillings on one building in East Africa. And all of these guys speaking English don't even have half of it. She knows the principle. The problem with many people is he sits in a house and drives like a car and then eats enough food and puts on a nice colon and clothes and then he thinks he's rich. That's the biggest problem with Uganda. We can't dream bigger than working for men and having the small businesses that earn us five or six million a month. I told, listen, me, I'm going to quit the bank this year. Because I've realized the bank can't give me the money I want, period. But there's a man praying, oh God, if only I can have that job. I entered banking five years ago. I started from scratch, became supervisor in one year, became branch manager. There are people I entered, found in the bank, and they are still clerks. It did not happen by mistake. They are principles. Hallelujah. Let me show you something Genesis. Let me show you something Genesis. Genesis 28 verse 20. So, do we agree that Melchizedek received the ten from Abraham? And the lesser one Abraham gave the greater one the priest? Melchizedek? And Jacob vowed a vow saying, this is Jacob, not according to the law. Moses has not yet come. Do you agree? And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will, see, will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, I will, and will give me bread to eat and what? Raymond, amen to put on. Raymond to put on. Next line. What did he say? So that I come back again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Verse 22. And this stone which I have set of a pillar shall be God's house. Of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Was that a law? Was it a law by Moses? This came from a spirit of a man by faith, whose father tithed, grandfather. And he realized he was moving in the principle of the blessed seed, of being a seed of Abraham. Isaac was blessed. 
that even when he went to wells that were dry, the Bible says when he dug them, they brought forth water. When Isaac dug wells which were dry, they always brought forth water. The blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now Jacob has the city money, has an issue, and he needs to be bailed out. He promises the Lord that if you bring me back to my father's house in peace, with everything I will have amassed, I shall give thee a tenth. He needed a priest to give it to him. He needed a higher one to give it to him. But he pledged to give that tenth. Was it under Moses? Was under the leading of the Spirit. But have you ever asked yourself why the two led of the Spirit, both Abraham and Jacob, are beginning from ten? Why not anything below? You can also submit by faith, I'll give 70%. You see the Christians who say, Ah, Pastor, do we tithe gross or not? Me, I've been tithing gross ever since I started working. Why? Because the faith tithe is different from the law tithe. So as far as your faith, let it be done unto you. If you give a tenth gross, you will receive back a tenth gross. For the Bible is very clear, you reap what you sow. One time I was with Pastor Isaac, and then he told me a story of the man of God who was complaining. Remember what's that? The man of God uh, in his the ministry where he was at, one man of God complained, and then he said, there is a prophet people go to every Tuesday. I have heard that they give him money, and for us here in church, they don't tithe to us. So the prophet had started becoming, you remember? The prophet had started becoming jealous because he realized that they were blessing another man instead of him, yet he is pastoring those people. What this man of God did not understand, and the ministry failed. Failed, he died. God can't build on that kind of mind. What the man of God did not understand, he forgot the principle was very simple. You reap what you sow, not where you sow. So I don't look to anybody to build up the stadium we want. But if the Lord should use that person, well and good. He didn't say you reap where you sow. He said you reap what you sow. Have you realized that men's minds have become too minute, that they look at the church members, and then say, ha, if I can collect 200,000 shillings here and I want to build a church of $4 million, how can it be? And that's one thing I always tell ministers of God. I'm coming later to something about ministers also. That any minister of God who believes that Jesus said, I shall build my church, should never think how you're going to build a multi-million dollar ministry because you're not building it. He said, I shall be your portion. You're the letter. And when he promised that he shall be your portion, never look at any man in the ministry of the total sum of collections you get in a basket. He said, this is what will build a ministry. God can bring one man with all of those millions and put them on that table to build a house. Me and Pastor Isaiah have a secret of when we were starting to build this church, he would get money from his pocket, I get money from my pocket, he gets money, his wife gets money from her pocket, you understand? You bring church members, and in the church members you can't even raise 100,000, not 200,000 shillings. It has to be Pastor Isaiah, his wife, me. Do you understand? That's why I love, I love, I love Pastor Isaiah's wife with all my heart. I love that woman with all my heart. Why? Because this woman has given to this ministry more than many of you could ever assume. More than many of you could ever imagine. But me and Pastor Isaiah have a certain story of a person here who gave us, I think, more than 18 million shillings. And they were a student. And there are people here who could have even given a million and they've never touched it. So I'm not saying don't. I'm making you feel bad. No. I'm only telling you, we don't need you. When you came to Heart of Christ, you found the ministry moving. If you pack your car and go out of this ministry, it we shall still grow. Why? Because we have a commitment with God that goes beyond your two, four, thirty million. It is way bigger than your commandment. You know, like one time many years ago, I held back money. And then God asked me in a simple secret. He asked me, are you giving a poor person 
Oh, I repented. He caused a circumstance where the exact money I put in there, the exact note, because I've noted it, came back to my pocket. Then he told me, you're not giving a, a broke man. From that day, I don't give God thinking I'm giving a poor man. Simuyamba, yanyamba. You understand? So, the house of the Lord can be built by any man, not necessarily the total sum of the money that are put in this basket. I am delivered from the thought that any man here can be a hindrance to the success of this ministry. Because this ministry is not Pastor Isaiah Mboga, Apostle Grace, more Pastor Moses Dombo, but this is Deborah Mboga. This ministry is Christ. It's not Malala. No. We also want to hold a line of accountability principles as minister, the gospel. Do you know how many pastors are sleeping hungry because they floated the same principles? How many ministries have even failed to grow because they have floated the same principles? Every man must have a priest to whom they touch. If you never float the principles, you should never worry how the money comes in your account. Never. Never worry. And you will never be jealous when you see another man being blessed for having obeyed the principle. Never! Why? Because you'll understand he must have set a principle that transferred it. That's why a spiritual son of Pastor Zach can't come and give him three million shillings and I get jealous. I can't. Because Pastor Zach must have set a certain principle while I was sick. Ministers. Let me say something to minister. I'm sorry, but let me say it. The man doesn't tithe to his spiritual authority. The man doesn't offer to his spiritual authority. The man doesn't give a first fruit to his spiritual authority. But he is treating to his own to give a spiritual authority. To give money. To give his own that are submitted to him. To give tithe and, offer and first fruit. If they flop the rules and refuse to give it, they have not refused to give it because they are bad people. They have refused to give it because you frustrated the principle of transfer. You frustrated the principle of transfer. Let me tell you something about the Levites. Let me show you one thing I've seen many ministers do. And it's a mistake. Numbers 18. Verse 26. And then we'll go to verse 28. That speak unto the Levites. Any man of God in the room, woman of God. That speaks unto the Levites and says unto them, When you take the children of Israel, the tithes, we receive the tithe in the basket, which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer, offer up a heave offering of it to the Lord, even the tenth part of that tithe. That means, if a man of God receives a tenth, he should also get of that money and get of a tenth for his priest. But I've seen men of God get this whole money and eat it all. Verse 28. Thus you shall also offer a heap of free unto the Lord for all your tithes. Not only what you receive from the people around you, but everything you ever earn of, Levite, you shall, you shall also give a heap of free, a tenth of the Lord of all the tithes which you have received of the children of Israel, and you shall give thereof the Lord's heap of free who are in the priest, meaning every man of God should also tithe. I know why you're not saying amen. Now, I don't understand how a simple little guy can go to a school, they use their anointing, demonstrate their power, and he's saying, Pastor Isaiah is my spiritual father. And you, you can't, even in that small collection bag they give you 10,000, you can't get up a thousand to bring it to your man of God and tell him, man of God, I was blessed in the ministry. I have done that all of my life. Since I told Pastor Isaiah that I will give to him, you can testify. And I don't lack. I don't lack. Even those people who are fun, they brought a tent. I got off my man of God's tent. And I gave it to him. 
Ghost written. But ministers of the gospel, eating a tent, that is the highest level of immaturity, if not ignorance. Now that you know, if you do it again, you just be mature. Because you will never have enough in this gospel, because he is enough. He said unto the Levites, I shall be their portion. These guys can have lands and houses. For us, our portion is Christ. We don't have anywhere to turn to. The Lord. We don't. We, listen, when he was given the 12 tribes, he gave them everything. But when he was given the priest, he said, And for the priest, I shall be your Lord and portion. Simply put, we can only serve him, obey the principles he shall provide for us. That is why. No priest and minister of God should ever look at Ambrose and say, if Ambrose is not here, I will lack. That's the man who has floated the principles. But when you're doing the principles and the Lord is your portion, he, let me tell you, I have seen people who I don't preach or even minister to bless us than the people who we minister to and have the ability to. There is a woman who sends money every month to my radio program. She is not submitted in this ministry. She just had Apostle Grace preachers on radio. She had one someone. She has been sending checks every month paying off a portion. When that radio ministry came, it was supposed to be paid by the church. I told God I must get this burden off the church. Not because it's not a church program. It's the heart of Christ's ministry in Mokono program. But because my voice goes on it, I refused that that money should leave the coffers of this church to come and carry it. The lesser, the greater. Pastor Isaiah is going with me. I have never come to Pastor Isaiah and I told him, Mubat Kuba and Yesenters are ready. Never. I got a group of people who I trust. I push on them and I told them, if I have this Agatha and this group of people like this, if I have these round guys, I, we can do radio. The other month a guy brought me his salary, 600 and paid the month. I was surprised. How can a guy pay off his salary? And you, you have the ability. It's not, it's even pocket change and you don't have the mind. You see what I'm trying to tell you? Do you think if you don't have the mind, Grace Rivega will lack radio? You're very mistaken. When I was starting radio, I prayed to the Lord. He spoke to me about a particular man doing radio. I have been sending radio money every month to that man. I've first said it before you because of this. I wouldn't have said it. Ever since we started radio in August, I've been showing into another man's ministry. And whatever has been coming to radio, I have never touched it. Agatha Hamba can tell you, Rachel can tell you. It all goes to radio. So, even though there are men who show in the radio to continue, I get from my own pocket to show in another man's radio. Every month. That is too big for your 100,000. Too big. In the month of October, somebody who even done a listen to this radio sent three months. November, December, January. Thank God they started to listen online. Did I come to anyone and told him, oh, is doing badly. Now this is a man of God who stands in front of television and says, oh, you have to give to us, oh, you have to give to us. Those men don't do the principles, Bulunji. That's why Grace Lurega Matobu, the son of Pastor Isaiah Mbuga Kamoga, will never stand on television to make a fundraising show for money. I will never do it. Because the greater <laughs> blesses the lesser. I'm blessing you. You're not blessing me. Say my see my ladder. So tell your neighbor, position yourself for the transfer. I have a few minutes to go here. Tell your neighbor, position yourself for the pastor. One time I found a wonderful evangelist. He told me his story. And the Lord, I had savings somewhere. In that savings was in foreign currency. The Lord told me, get those savings. I had the man speak. He spoke to me 
for five minutes about his ministry. Okay? The Lord spoke to my heart. He told me, get into your saving. I'd saved quite a number of dollars because I was supposed to be doing a certain trip. The Lord told me, get those dollars, give them to evangelist. I got those dollars, I gave them to evangelist. Evangelist used to the money. He was surprised. He said, Man, God, how can you give me this much money for the ministry? He said something that I had to place a demand on. And the only way I could place a demand on that thing was showing the seed. Now there's a difference between Simon the Socrates kind. Because Simon's giving was not wrong. Simon's giving from the girl of bitterness was the problem. For I perceive in thee is the girl of bitterness and what? So if that wasn't in the man, the, there's a difference between trying to buy an anointing by money and placing a demand on something by what you carry. Because what you carry is your ransom. You remember what I told you? Proverbs 23? 13, sorry. Verse 8. Proverbs 13, verse 8. The Bible says, Proverbs, verse 8. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth no rebuke. There comes a time where what you carry can ransom your life. In fact, if you understand that principle, you realize that there are men who die of disease because of not giving. Because of not giving. Some of you don't understand that like a man ransoms his life physically. There is also a spiritual aspect that can buy back a few things. I'm telling you. Now what, what was in the mouth of this evangelist that caused me to give everything that I had? That cannot be in the head of a man who sits under Pastor Isaiah and he teaches you all year and you have never thought to even get a sense. You think he needs that 100,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 or 5,000? Question. When you have not given it to him, has his family lacked? Have his children failed to get education? Is he driving a bad car because you failed? Has he run out of fuel? Doesn't he have clothes and shoes on his own? Isn't the ministry growing? Have you added anything? Have you subtracted anything from not placing it in his hands? You have not subtracted anything from not placing it in his hands. But truly, you have not grown either. Why did I bless an evangelist who spoke 15 minutes? Five minutes for him. Did I want him to? No. There was a need. There was a demand I had on something spiritual. And I asked him, Pastor Isaiah should not bless you. And you can't bless him. There are people, Galatians 6 6, they that communicate to you the word. The Bible says, communicate back to them in all good things. If a man has blessed you, bless them. If you have never placed a hand in Pastor Isaiah's hand, a, 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 a coin in Pastor Isaiah's hand, or me, or Pastor Zach, or Pastor Michael, or Pastor Emma, it means we have never blessed you. So I'm not saying give me ha. Huh? No, don't give me and you see whether I won't drive my car, I won't build my stuff. I will do. I don't need your money. I do not need your money. You can stand out. We have never manipulated anybody to give. In fact, there are things now, but I would sometimes be and say, I'm come money. She need to say, Queen. Then we do it without anyone knowing. Who he independently contributed on the buying of the first machines of this church? These machines. Put up your hand. Don't we have machines? Do you know how much was spent? Do you understand our country? How much did we land buy this land? How many of you contributed on this plot of land? By show of hands, how many? Did we have a plot of land? <laughs> Do you understand our country? You're not helping God. You're helping yourself. Pastor Isaiah can never stand on a pulpit and tell a man, give me this. He cannot. It's not that kind of man. Do you know one time Pastor Isaiah 
got money from his servants and put them in this ministry because certain men had failed to understand me. He got his servants and collect them here. Boop, all of it, I said one night. Now, right on top of preaching to these guys, these poor men, because they must be poor, he's spending all his money on a need of men he blessed. How, how won't we be blessed? Really, uh-uh, Kathy, -uh, now, do you understand why we have to be blessed? Because we do the principles. Some, you see, and that's what I told you, if I get a small example, but let me explain. A man can refuse to do the principles. And the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So what does the devil do? It steals him. His health. The type he refused to give to church goes to IHK. That's why I told people, when you think about it, it is stupid. Pastor Zach was giving me a testimony of Segaran, the CEO of Malaysian Furniture. The man is worth billions of shillings, a million of dollars. Sekaran came in this country as a missionary. He said with his own wife, Pastor, Pastor Zach will affirm to this, Sekaran said that he came in this country as a missionary and pledged to God to give a tithe for every increase he had. And he testified that his children have never fallen sick in Uganda as they grew up. Never! Sekaran's children never fell sick one day in Uganda while he ties to his God. But he could have refused. An increase came. Are you hearing me? And then when increase came, affliction comes in the house and he spends money to get affliction out of the house. And that's what Christians are doing. You refuse, right? They rob you five million, it goes to a funny Muslim or an atheist. And then he builds, he buys two border borders. Shouldn't that money have come to the church and build from something worms cannot eat all? So, that's why I tell such people, you're just stupid. You're not even mature, you're just stupid. I don't, it's not abusive, you're just stupid. Because there is a way, they still transfer. You're not going to frustrate the transfer, it is still moving. Why? Because you, the money that is going to buy GlaxoSmithKline tablet, GlaxoSmithKline is an affiliate of an American company, and so you're taking back that money. Is that way? Our now you're going to take a call of Peter. We're going to take a call of Buba Buba. So he dropped the principles. You understand? What do they call those witches? Cannulas. Cannulas come from China to come and enter his blood. Money is transferred. Because the cannula is bought at an expensive price. You don't make cannula. So, flawed or not, the principle is still. Because even the thief who stole from you to buy two border borders, the border borders didn't come from Uganda. They were made in India. The transfer will still continue. Now, for me and Pastor Isaiah, if we do our principles, very simple, we, our transfer will also continue. We or without you. You get what I'm trying to tell you. So do you see that the health of men is not ransomed? Oh, no, no. Okay, let me find in Psalms, the book of Psalms. This is very clear. Very clear. You see what giving does. Psalms 41 verse 1 to 3. You see what giving does. Simple of giving to the poor. Let me show you something. He says, blessed is he that what? Considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Imagine. Some people's trouble is delivered out because they consider the poor. You can be delivered out of trouble because you help the poor brother, a poor sister. Some of them are not necessarily poor. Uh -uh. Back to the principle, greater. Anyway, let's continue. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. 
That is why they find you with a life threatening disease and not the key. And tell God, I have to raise that car guy. They said, I have to raise that car guy. That car guy. See to it that I raise him. Because if he dies, who's going to look after him? I booked him. <laughs> That's why I look at people who have raised other people's children. Those people just don't die. They just don't die. If you can't raise that kid in your own household, commit your life and say every month I'll be seeing this kid's school fees. You'll get out of trouble. He shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not what? Deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Next line. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. The moment he starts to feel something in his body, the Lord will strengthen him. Though thou will make, sorry, God will make all his bed in his sick. Let us get the next verse. Let us get the next verse. Let us get from verse 1. Let me find those who are down on their rock. You'll feel good. That's what God does. Next line. God looks after us all, makes us robbers with life, because we are getting to the poor. Lucky to be in the land. We're free from enemy worry. Next line. Whenever we're sick and in bed, God becomes our nurse and nurses us back to health. Oh, the moment you understand this principle, you look for a poor person and help them. All of these men who are dying of human high blood pressure in hospitals, they don't help the poor. Yet they are rich. That's the principle. That's why people who are sickly, sickly, look at them, they're not given. People who have sicknesses, that they're not given. There are things that give I can't carry. That's why many of my kids will say, oh, I have this pastor, Papa, I'm suffering from this. Many of them, even a tight is hard paper. You can't pay. Am I saying anything out of the scripture? I'm saying everything in the scripture. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay your dues. The Lord shall reward you. Don't float the principles and expect increase or get jealous when other men are increasing. Levite, minister, preacher, evangelist, pastor, woman of God, even you who does nothing in the church. Praise the Lord Jesus. Luke eleven twenty two. Paul, Jesus was very clear on the type. Some people say, ah ah, in the New Testament there is no type. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Let me correct you. Luke 11, 22, somebody says, open anywhere and show me in the New Testament where there is type. Let me show you in the New Testament where there is type. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it's not Luke 11, 22. Praise the Lord. Let me get it for you shortly. It's not Luke 11, 22. But I can get it. Tell your neighbor, we have a few minutes. And if you're tired, go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 11.42, not 22.42. Luke 11.42. Let's read. He says, War unto you Pharisees, for you tithe. Tell anybody they tithe. They tithe meat and rule and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. This thing, sorry. They, 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 they what? They type means and rule and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. So they pass over judgment and the love of God, okay? So that means they were typing it, but they were going beyond the love of God and judgment. So they didn't understand judgment and love, but they were typing, okay? But what does the next line say? The next line says, all ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. What is that in English? You should have done the type, but you don't also leave the other one undone. So is Jesus against type? 
Is Jesus understanding type according to Moses? No. He says, all ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. He didn't say, you're not even supposed to do the type. You're only supposed to do judgment and love. He says, do the type, but also do what? Yes. So, it's not bad to type, but also understand the judgment and love. This is Jesus telling you. So, are you saying there is no type in the New Testament? Give me the amplified version of the same. But woe unto you Pharisees, for you type mint and rue and every little herb, but disregard and neglect justice and the love of God. This you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. He's saying do both. Do the type and also give love and justice. My Lord did not understand type from the mosaic. He understood type from Abraham. Who gave not under the law but under grace and his son Jacob as well did. Now if the type is understood, allow me to just make one more point on the first fruit and then get up here. Many people never give first fruit. That's why there is a quietness in the house. If you're writing in your Bible or book, I want you to write that the principle's first fruit is the place of our possession and conversion to ownership. It's the place of our possession and conversion of ownership. This is very important. It's the place of our conversion to ownership. The possession, place of our possession and conversion to ownership. Let me show you a scripture. Numbers 34, 29. It can, can suffice. It says, These are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Meaning Canaan was the inheritance of the children of Israel and therefore the land was supposed to be distributed between them. Can it also suffice? Can it work? So do you believe with me that Canaan was given as an inheritance to the children of Israel and because it was given to the children of Israel they could distribute as allocated to them? Do you, do you agree on that part? Praise the Lord. Thank you for agreeing. This was an experience of the children of Israel being given instruction. Praise the Lord. In the he said that the part of the first fruit of thy land. Okay? Now this was the instruction to give you the of what they were to be made over there. Okay? He said that the part of thy the part of the first fruit of thy land. Thou shalt bring it to the house of the Lord thy God, but thou shalt not see a king in his mother's name. I'll do something like that. When the Lord gave Israel of Canaan, he told that the king when he gave to Canaan, the first fruit that comes out of that land shall be given. Now, I'm not talking about the first fruit of this land in this particular way. I'm talking about that experience before the man and the child. And God be in his mind. You understand? And how God tells the man that even though I have given you this land in case, it's also the fire. But when you start to plan and you have two kinds of things, that first thing that comes out of that land is not yours. It is not yours. It is not yours. The only problem then is the one that was had is that Canada was not for Israel originally. It had inhabitants. And that's a place of conversion to ownership. Many of the things that the living God for don't belong to you now, physically. The church and the church is a place. You get what I'm saying? For example, look at the people who don't have clothes.
That's how you begin. And you get it with God's truth. I say it to God, and say it to my mother.
and that are unloving, may that is the best for you. Lord, come in, you too, like the one. If you want to come to work it after all things are done, say, Ray, let me see. Come to work it after all things are done. Even though you let you after all things are done. And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Yes, man, speak unto the children of Israel and say to them, And the Lord said unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land that they give unto you, you shall lift the house there, and of when you shall bring the sheep of the first fruit of the harvest into the fish. Unto the fish. Yes, you shall start to reap. From that tree and that sort of life, from those businesses, the moment when you bring your life, you may then start to bring that open. By the way, you need to start to read the house when you bring. You understand? When you bring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said to the children of Israel, he said unto them, then ye. When you come to the land that I have given you, you shall reap the harvest thereof. Then you shall bring the sheep of the first fruit of the harvest and the fish. That is, you have guaranteed that opening place of the first animal. That's the joke. Mm -hmm. That's the 10,000 you are going to Pray the Lord to say. Pray the Lord to say. Hallelujah. And that is why when 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 he when God is talking about Israel in Jeremiah, he says they are my God's fruit. He owns them. It's a place of compassion for us. Very well, Mr. Hallelujah. And I should be Jeremiah to see. Jeremiah to see. He says Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruit of his victory. Israel was the holiness of the Lord and the first fruit of his increase. He looked at Israel because he had to get a place of conversion to Israel to ownership. Everything you need to convert to ownership requires a place of sacrifice to own. He could not own Israel without it becoming a sacrifice to him. Then, one thing is How many of you don't have a speaker? He said, so be long words to God that is in the word of truth, that you should be a kind of past truth of his life, because anything that is past truth comes back energy. Now, if you take your past truth, the best to your father and get it to them. Thanks to God. Hope it to God. He said, let's wait until the next day. Make it like it. It's not going to happen. Now, but I'm not going to give up to you, I'm not going to tell you. Don't ever waste my time to pray for me. You don't waste your time to pray for me. Don't ever waste my time to pray for me, to be financial. That's why some of you realize that you are here. Not because I don't want to help you, but why are you refusing to do the principle and you want the purpose to go and do the purpose? You want the purpose that you want to do? The purpose? Hallelujah. Very well, do the second. Let me speak my word. Okay. Very good. I have one to share there. I think I'll speak in two months. I want to stop there. Don't worry. We'll get to you. 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 If you are eaten the Lord of the fruits, or if you are still the hand of the fruit, and then you teach students, don't cut it, because you have gotten a job. Start giving the first fruit in time, while you are still eating, you won't get to go. I never looked for a job. Hallelujah. And Lord is still great enough to get the letter. Refuse to go your feet, and you will be done. So they find me like you are this this place. Hallelujah. I'm not going to come there. They do not have to speak to God. They don't find that spirit in there. Yes, I'm not speaking to God. Thank you. Thank you. They start to get my trust. Yes. 
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Sonero. Sonero, make manifest.